Howdy y'all, it's Kelsey D Comics. I usually draw comics, but today I'm drawing a phone wallpaper that'll double as a mini print. This is a reward for members of my club. If you'd like to find out more about that, head to ko-fi.com slash Kelsey D Crawford, link on the screen and in the doobly-doo. I would also like to do a little experiment because usually these sorts of story things I share on live streams, but this week I'm taking a break from live streams because I am pooped. <laughs> I am a little live streamed out. So instead, I thought that I would share a little story, a little story time while drawing this. And the topic that I want to cover today is how I got into drawing. Okay, with that, let us begin. First, I got to copy over this thumbnail that I did in my sketchbook and paste it over here. This is the foundation of what we're working with. Get it to size and then we will build off of these bones and get going. I'm one of those art people that's been drawing since I was wee. When I first started drawing, it was a lot of cats and dragons, particularly dragons. I was a big fan of Spyro the Dragon. When I first started drawing, I actually wanted to do comic strips because one of my biggest artistic inspirations was Garfield. I'm not ashamed to admit that. I mean, it was funny to me, <laughs> but it was also one of those things where the comic had been around for such a long time that probably by that point, Jim Davis was getting a little more surreal with his ideas. And that kind of shows <laughs> with uh, a lot of the comics that were really foundational to me with Garfield. A lot of the Garfield strips that I really resonated with were very, very surreal. Like Garfield shooting toast, you know, that sort of humor. I still get a kick out of that comic strip, not gonna lie. But I got into comics because I really liked Garfield and I was like, hey, I'll try to do the gag thing. Uh, and I tried doing talking cat comics. It, they were not great. I was like six or seven at the time. So unfortunately, I do not have the comic strips, the original comic strips from that era anymore, because when I was about seven years old, our childhood home burnt down and that meant a lot of stuff went up in flames. Uh, anything that was not in storage anyway, but that's a story for another day. But eventually we did get another house. Um, there was a brief period of time where we were homeless. That's why homelessness is a issue that I care about. It just means that I don't have the original comic strips from that period of time. I do have canvases with my sketches from my high school sketchbooks from like 2004 to 2008. I still have two canvases that have my sketches just kind of plastered onto them because I thought it would be a fun idea to take old sketches and put them up on a canvas in an artistically collaged way. Here's a picture of both of those <laughs> for editing Kelsey to put in. I'm gonna put so much work on editing Kelsey in this video. I apologize in advance to editing Kelsey. So in, middle school, uh, my friends and I started making little zines. We called them the little books of nothing or the little books of something, depending on who would spearhead the books or what the little zines were about. If they were like the episodic adventures of our basically self-insert characters, I think those were the little books of something. The little books of nothing were a little more nothing <laughs> or at least whatever was catching our interest at the time uh for me it was a lot of dragon ball and dragon ball z which interestingly was not one of the series that got me to draw like i love the series i really do but it was not what got me to begin drawing in the first place disney was actually a point of interest after garfield <laughs> Um, it was Garfield and then Disney. And for a while as a kid, I wanted to work as a Disney animator. We'll get to that. <laughs> I was not necessarily drawing Disney characters because I didn't necessarily want to try to get to that level, but I did draw a lot of dragons, a lot of characters for comics that my friends and I were making in the little books of nothing and the little books of something. And that was middle school. Then high school, for a multitude of reasons, my family moved to a new place. And it was there that I was really getting into anime and manga. And keep in mind, this was around that block of time when Toonami was still a thing. 
on TV. I mean, Toonami was very much a thing when I was in middle school, and I watched a lot of Toonami. Anybody remember Pudgy Tom, the host? Like, because I love Pudgy Tom. But I also have a soft spot in my heart for little pudgy characters. I also am a fan of this iteration of Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> So maybe it's just me. Grew up on Toonami, so that meant that I got a lot of the early stuff for Dragon Ball Z. I also got to see Yu Yu Hakusho, Veroni Kenshin, before Veroni Kenshin's creator was revealed to be... <gasps> ah! So, um, also really liked Cyborg 009 when that came out, as uh, problematic as some of the character designs are by our standards nowadays. It was still, like, the message was sincere. <laughs> I mean, it had that going for it. But I was also just really taken by Cyborg 009 because it had this super cartoony aesthetic, but it took itself so seriously, and I found that endlessly fascinating as a kid. Some of my first characters were that I started to draw in my sketchbooks were not Disney or Dragon Ball. It was actually Baroni Kenshin characters and Cyborg 009. Uh, in particular, 0010, you know, if you know, you know, his, he looks ridiculous because most of the character designs in that series look ridiculous, but he also has a tragic backstory because that's just how anime works. My little tween teen self found that endlessly fascinating, so of course I resonated with it and I drew him a lot, like obsessively. He was everywhere in my sketchbooks at the time. Again, I don't have those sketchbooks anymore, but I remember when I was going through my sketchbooks to put together those canvases that I showed the picture of earlier, there were a lot of those. <laughs> there were a lot of sketches of 0010 and Cho Sawajijo from Roni Kenshin. He was just a, a wild dude. <laughs> yeah, had a lot of fun with those two, particularly their uh, expressions. Though, after a point, in high school, I did start drawing a lot more Dragon Ball, but only because I discovered the manga and the manga of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z was what got me interested in drawing fan art for the series. So I did practice Mr. Perfect Cell, but he was actually the character that I did not draw the most. That honor actually goes to Super Boo, specifically this iteration of Super Boo, because he has like, probably, I don't know, five or eight different forms, but I really liked this one. He just had a nice face. <laughs> he had the nicest face out of the bunch of forms that he had. He was also in baggy enough clothes that I didn't have to try to draw muscles, <laughs> which was probably a big factor in why I liked him so much. But he was also super expressive. And I had a lot of fun drawing different facial expressions on him. Might be detecting a theme with the kinds of characters that I like to draw. <laughs> if the theme is, hey, Kelsey, you really like drawing wild facial expressions, you are correct. <laughs> Here is a close up of one of my canvases showing a uh, self insert character getting electrocuted to prove my point. I'm gonna take a second pausing the story so that I can correct this arm. It is giving me trouble. Hold on. There. Now that we have Bree Bree securely in my lap. I feel like I can continue my story, though the voice might be a little more hushed as I proceed so that I do not disturb the fur baby. Other characters I had a lot of fun drawing when I first started also included Raditz from Dragon Ball Z. Not, not just because he had like Sonic the Hedgehog hair, though that might have been a factor, I don't know. But he was also one of those characters that I was like endlessly frustrated that he did not get more screen time when he first debuted because <sighs> You know, he's the main he's the main character's brother and he did an evil thing and that should be fascinating and yet Toriyama didn't do anything with that. I was frustrated, so I ended up writing a lot a lot of fanfic <laughs> regarding this character and drawing a lot of fan art with him. That was also a factor. <laughs> also, oh, other things that got me into drawing. Uh Hunter Hunter actually, cuz that was when Hunter Hunter was first being released stateside in its manga form was when I was in high school. Yeah, that betrays my age. I do not care. Okay, we're about to draw the legs. Here we go. Had to foreshorten the thigh there. Uh, 
this might take some tweaking. So if I'm not reveling in more story time, that would probably be why, while I puzzle solve this leg. Now I could pull up, because <laughs> uh, as I got older, I discovered the Dragon Ball Z movies and discovered Janemba. And I actually did a whole bunch of like character studies of Janemba in my sketchbook back in like 2016, 2017. Uh, those probably showed up on this archive live stream. If you want to give that a watch, just fair warning, it's a long one. It's like four hours. I was getting ready for a convention that day. <laughs> Or, uh, art market, I should say. I was getting ready for an art market that day, so... Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think I need to make those legs a little bit bigger. Let me turn off the thumbnail layer. Yeah, I think they need to be just a, a bit bigger. Sometimes it helps if you just flip things upside down. <laughs> Not too much. Not too much bigger. Just about that. That, I think. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay, for this leg, I'm gonna try a couple different iterations. <laughs> Use the magic wand tool to select the areas that I want in order to do this. Boop. There we go. Calling that pencil's leg. <laughs> there we go. Um... Okay. Oh, right. Uh, back to how I got into drawing. So that was middle school and high school uh, and a little bit of uh, childhood as well. And then college came around. I'll, I'll be honest, I don't want to get too, too much into the college stuff, if only because it was kind of a blur and I don't remember all of it. And also, I don't have my sketchbooks from that period anymore. <laughs> Not really. The only one that I kept was um, my trip to Navajo Nation. Real glad that I kept that, though, because that came in handy for when I created Ninity or The End, which is a short story from Iron Circus comics. Hopefully it's out by the time that you see this video because it's in the anthology failure to launch. Maybe it's out, I don't know. But during college, that was around the time that it was actually sophomore year, I signed on as a caricature artist at an amusement park. I kind of don't want to say what amusement park it is, but you know, it's one of the major ones in Ohio. It's not Kings Island, but it is one of the major ones in Ohio. <laughs> I was signed on as a caricature artist at this place, and I was a caricature artist for about three years, and I enjoyed my time there. Although the first summer was exceptionally rough because, yeah, no, you know what? We'll save that for a, a different video, actually. Me thanks. Yeah, I'm going to save that for a separate video if you want to hear the tea about working at this amusement park as a caricature artist, let me know in the comments. I might make another video kind of like this where I talk about my experiences as a caricature artist. We'll see. I kind of like this better than the original thumbnail. We'll be drawing clothes on him. Uh, that'll be next, but we got to get the foundations down. Um, so for comparison, these, this was the original sketch. This is what we have so far. I kind of like having that one leg extended. I might just keep it that way. Okay, I do have that other leg on this layer. Oh, hold on. For a uh, better comparison, we should do this. So this is leg one. Oh, I forgot it was much lower. <laughs> yeah, so there's leg one. Leg two. One. Two. I like leg two. Back to the costume. Let's render this in green. Uh, so yeah, I was signed on as a caricature artist for three years. And then at year three, there were actually a number of factors. Maybe I'll get into it 
in the video if you want me to spill the tea about the about the place but there is definitely a um there's a loss of magic after a point caricature stopped being fun and by that point I had come up with a plan. Um, I had kind of pulled a Billy from Thoughtful Dinosaur and I had come up with a plan of like, okay, I am going to stay at this job and I am going to do this thing and this thing and this thing. And then on the side, I will make comics. And that's not how that works with uh, being a caricature artist, by the way. <laughs> uh, when when you sign as a, as a caricature artist, it's, it's like a, basically a one and done thing. You are a caricature artist, full time, nonstop. Like, there's not really a doing it on the side kind of thing. Unless it's a seasonal work and you're not getting enough hours and you need something to supplement your income. But even then, that's like a super temporary basis. And at the time, I did not know how to handle that because no one had given me the mental framework to know how to handle that. My autistic brain really likes having frameworks for how to handle things, and nobody had given me the framework for how to handle something like this. So I ended up quitting being a caricature artist and moved back in with my mom and was figuring out my next steps. My next steps did involve a lot of putting around working part-time jobs, trying to make ends meet and figuring out what my next plan would be. Uh, at the time, I thought that maybe trying for a publishing deal would be a way to go but then I looked into Tokyo Pop at the time and discovered that oh yikes I really shouldn't work with Tokyo Pop and also at the same time this was 2013 so this was when web comics were kind of in their heyday before the advent of webtoon so it was right around then that I actually had family uh notably my older sister being like what are you going to do a webcomic about Johnson and Sir, which was a gag that my younger sibling and I had cooked up while playing the Jack and Daxter games? <laughs> my older sister was like, hey, when are you going to make a comic about uh, Johnson and Sir? Because I thought that was so funny when you were making that. And that was when I started making Johnson and Sir. And then Johnson and Sir led to validation. Then that led to seeing him and Thoughtful Dinosaur and Charlie and Clow and the case of the Wendigo and some spot things. Like I would make appearances on occasion on other web comics as a guest artist. And then that eventually led to The Legend of Jamie Roberts and New Punk Signal and Vanita and the Demon King. And that was how I got my start was by drawing and drawing a lot. <laughs> As to the dream of, hey, Kelsey, I thought you mentioned wanting to uh, be a Disney animator. What happened? That's gonna be a story for another day, I think. Just add the hoodie cords and Yeah, I think we got a solid, sketchy foundation going there. I kind of want to leave him barefoot, because <laughs> that seems like a very, a very Steve thing to do. I intended this to look baggier, but it came out looking like a crop top. Maybe I'll just leave it as a crop top hoodie. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe I'll put shoes on him. Maybe I'll just have him in socks. I don't know yet. But that's, that's my story for now. Thank you for listening. If you would like to get this phone wallpaper, head over to kofi.com slash Kelsey D. Crawford and join my art club. Art club members get exclusive comics and discounts in my shop, early access to my webcomic updates, as well as phone wallpapers that are exclusive for members to download. That's all I've got for now. If you like this video, give it a like. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this video. This video is actually a different format than what I usually do. So if you like it, shout it out in the comments. Let me know what you think. And be sure to subscribe to catch my shorts, live streams, and future videos. That's all for now. Thanks for listening. You are awesome.